This lecture covers in a qualitative manner Newton's second law. Newton's second law is the mathematical heart of motion. I'm going to illustrate Newton's second law to you using this air track demonstration that I showed previously with respect to my lectures on the law of inertia. Before I do, however, let's briefly revisit the law of inertia. Essentially, the law of inertia describes the cause of acceleration. Acceleration is caused by the presence of a net force. Newton's second law quantifies this. It describes how much acceleration occurs. How much acceleration occurs depends upon, as we'll see, two quantities. As I go through this description, however, qualitatively, of Newton's second law, you need to keep in mind the following. What I'm about to describe to you is not a derivation. Newton recognizes this mathematical relationship as fundamental to nature. In other words, this is the mathematical heart of motion. It's a fundamental aspect of nature itself. Okay, let me begin to demonstrate the two quantities to you before I go through a thorough explanation here on the board. So for example, we have my gold cart right here, which has a low amount of inertial mass. And now what I'm gonna do is once again, use the string here, like so, drape it over the side of this pulley, and then I'm using right here this small gold object that you've seen before. And now let's go ahead and examine the acceleration when I remove the force of friction. Like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the situation here a little bit. I'm gonna once again switch to the blue cart, which you've seen before, like so. I'm gonna attach the same little gold object here to the blue cart, like this. Drape it over the side of the pulley, like so. And then we'll compare the acceleration now of the blue cart to that of the gold cart from a moment ago. Okay, as we've noted before, the acceleration of the blue cart is less than that of the gold cart. This then means that the blue cart is more massive. This immediately, however, begins to mathematically describe a relationship between acceleration and mass. Acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. In other words, the greater the mass of the object, the less the acceleration. That's what you saw when I switched from the gold to the blue cart. But now, in addition to mass, however, the amount of acceleration that occurs depends upon the net force. In other words, how much force is being applied to the object itself. So now let me change that parameter by doing the following. I'm going to once again use my gold cart, or excuse me, my blue cart here for this portion of the demonstration. But now I'm going to change the amount of net force that's being applied to the blue cart by switching from this small gold object that I've been using to this larger object like so. So let me go ahead and attach this. Okay, this larger gold object, by the way, is heavy enough such that even with the air off, the blue cart begins to accelerate. So I'm going to have to go ahead and hold it in place like so. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the air. Like so. And the acceleration of the same blue cart here was greater in this case than it was earlier when I had the smaller object hanging off to the side. In other words, the amount of acceleration that occurs is proportional to the net force that is applied to it. That's what I'm illustrating here in this demonstration, the two parameters, the two variables, if you will, that are important in quantifying acceleration, mass and net force. And now let me briefly move my phone back so that we could see the board, and let me write this out now for you formally. So bear with me a moment while I move my phone. Like so. Okay, so to begin, we now have Newton's second law. Newton's second law quantifies the amount of acceleration. occurs in the presence of a net force. 
Once again, the presence of a net force causes acceleration. Now we're quantifying it. Okay, in the first portion of the demonstration, I changed the mass of the cart. I went from gold to blue, I increased the mass. As you saw, the acceleration decreased. This means that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. This right here is the proportionality symbol, and that ultimately means the following. When I go from the gold to the blue cart, I make this number bigger, therefore I make this number smaller. Once again, think of this as not a derivation, but beginning to recognize a fundamental aspect of nature. Okay, and then the second portion of the demonstration, the acceleration was then directly proportional to the amount of force that was being applied to it, that is the net force. I showed this with the blue cart by increasing the amount of weight that was hanging over the side of the pulley. So acceleration is proportional to the net force. Moreover, the direction of the acceleration vector is the same as the direction of the net force vector. You can understand that from the force diagram of the situation in the following way. When the air is on, there are three forces acting upon the object, as we've already noted. There's the weight straight downwards, there's the tension here to the right-hand side, and then still somehow, we'll get to this a little bit later on, somehow the track pushes upwards. Okay, vertically, the two forces here cancel each other out as vectors, but horizontally, this tension force is not being canceled out by friction. Therefore, the direction of the net force is to the right-hand side. That's the same as the direction of the acceleration. Hence, the vector symbol here above the acceleration vector and the net force vector. We actually combine these two proportionalities here into a seemingly very simple equation. It is, however, as we'll see, a little bit deceptive as we begin to move through chapter, or through this unit, rather, on dynamics. Okay, we combine the two proportionalities together by writing the expression in the following way. Putting in the unequal sign. And now, usually with this expression, by the way, it's usually written with the mass moved up to the numerator on the other side of the expression. And we then, therefore, write Newton's second law as the following, f equals ma. Okay, this very deceptive looking, simple looking expression is actually describing the following. The left hand side of the expression is the vector sum of the individual forces that are acting upon an object. The right-hand side of the expression is the number that the forces add up to, whatever it is. And that's what's referred to as the net force. However, how much acceleration occurs doesn't just depend upon the number as a whole, the net force. It also depends upon the inertial mass of the object. The greater the mass of the object, the less the acceleration, as we saw in the simple demonstration. This equation, F equals MA, which Newton intuited, he did not derive it. This equation, F equals MA, is the mathematical heart of motion. It describes the motion of anything, literally, throughout the entire universe. What you will see me do over and over and over as we proceed through this unit on dynamics is I will begin to analyze situations involving motion with this expression as my starting point. However, before we do that, in addition to the first law, the law of inertia, and now the second law, F equals MA, there is a third fundamental relationship still with regards to motion, Newton's third law. I'll describe that in the next couple of lectures.